If you wanted to turn a Nintendo 64 style collectathon platformer into a 2025 indie dev roguelike game, then Frog's Galaxy Escape is probably the game you're looking for, especially if you want, you know, a frog protagonist, which who doesn't? This quirky game definitely had me wondering where I was going at the start, and after an hour or two of play, whilst I wouldn't say it's my favourite demo-ish release game that I've been sent yet, I actually think there's a few things in there that's quite fun. It's going to tell you what's to like about Frog's Galaxy Escape, but then I'm going to tell you a few things that I think kind of needs to be improved. Now given that the game's releasing in the 25th of March 2025, there's still a bit of time, I believe this solo dev's been making some upgrades, depending on the feedback as well, so take mine with a grain of salt. So in this game you very quickly find out that these frogs are being turned into puzzle pieces and you get flashbacks to Banjo-Kazooie and games like that where you were just spending all your time searching. But you don't have to really look all that far in this one because you're sent onto these little very small floating platforms and your job is just to pretty much attack things until the pieces appear. Your main avenue of doing this is by spending some of these pink little pieces you pick up for some reason and then buying cards that give you access to things like a big hammer that punches, little floating octopuses that go around you and bubbles that you blow and stuff like that. As you play through and defeat enemies you will level up and then get the choice of doing some kind of addition. There's the roguelike element I guess but it's pretty minimal. And these are things like extra damage for your hammers or the ability to blow bubbles in different directions. It's pretty simple but it makes sense. This game feels more like a 3D vampire survivor style game for me as you just run around, try and dodge the enemies as much as you can, attack them and then eventually get to move on to the next level. There are these little mini games in between the levels and it reminded me once again of some nostalgic Street Fighter 2 where you used to just be asked to punch a car and I didn't really know why my frog was running along these platforms but if you want me to run along platforms, I'll run along platforms. And there was even a little bit of a boss fight that I thought was pretty cool until I realised that I can completely stooge it and abuse one little small thing and defeat it without taking any damage. So that kind of links into some of my complaints about Frog's Galaxy Escape. Pretty much if you want to play this in the easiest optimal way, you've just got to abuse some kind of small weakness in the game. My best example of that is that I took the most amount of damage when I was moving around so I found out quite quickly that if I just stood still I would pretty much just attack the enemies and they would disappear. Even when you get the ability to level up, you'll notice that your little frog keeps attacking in the background so you can just wait in your level up menu and then you'll pretty much just be at the next level as soon as you hop out. In a Vampire Survivor style game you do really need to have some level of movement and platforming and the need to move around so the fact that I took more damage by moving really was a bit of a put off for me and the quickest and easiest way to get through levels was just to abuse the idea of sitting in a corner and just letting the game do the work for itself. Now the levels themselves just go on for way too long. I think I timed one in about 10 to 12 minutes of just sort of sitting around and attacking and collecting those pieces. Sometimes you're collecting 90 pieces and whilst the levels are quite nice and pretty and I like jumping around and destructing some of the uh, environment, the fact that you're spending an extra five to 10 minutes just sitting there and attacking and waiting for your ability to collect the desired amount of pieces was a bit of a letdown for me. And my last little complaint about Frog's Galaxy Escape, that while some of your add-ons do actually have a visible impact on what's happening, I'm really not sure if they stack. Sometimes you're clicking on buttons and I don't really know if it's doing anything. You know, I'm clicking on double hammers, but I've already got two hammers. I was expecting some multiplication, give me four hammers, give me eight hammers, something like that. But really, it doesn't really impact yet. Now, as I said before, like this game is really, really early on in the dev life cycle. So I'm expecting some improvements, but what you can't deny is that it's actually quite fun, even when you ignore some of those little things that you can abuse. And I've played a few 3D kind of horde vampire survivor style games and they don't always hit home. I actually feel like this one might be some old fashioned classic arcade fun just as long as they can solve some of those issues around the platforming, around the movement and make it so that you really are sure what's happening when you're doing your roguelike element upgrades. I'm going to follow this one cautiously on Twitter and things like that but um, I'm curious to see if you think this is a roguelike game that you might like. Let me know what you think about Frog's Galaxy Escape.